الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها إن ذلك على الله يسير وقال تبارك وتعالى قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون صدق الله العظيم Honorable elders, respected brothers, sisters, your children, Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, who is our creator, our protector, and our sustainer. And we send salutations and peace and blessings upon our beloved Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have just begun the month of Safar. After the month of Muharram, we have begun the month of Safar. And in related to this month, and some of the concept, the understanding, and the misconceptions that people used to have in the time of Jahiliya. I would like to speak a little bit today about omens, about good omens and bad omens, good luck versus bad luck. So, what is the concept of that in Islam? We know that once a Sahabi by the name of Amir ibn Rabi'ah radiallahu anhu, he they went and to a certain place and they met certain different people there and who were not familiar with Islam and the teachings of Islam. And they asked that, why are you here? What is your purpose here? Why have you come here? So Amir ibn Rabi radiallahu anhu said, we have come to liberate you from لِنُخْرِجَ الْعِبَادِ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ رَبِّ الْعِبَادِ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ الْعِبَادِ إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ يَا إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ رَبِّ الْعِبَادِ In other words, we have come to liberate you, to take you out from the servitude of other servants, from worshipping other servants, to worshipping the Rabb of the servants, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have come to take you out from the diqid dunya, from the narrowness of this dunya ila si'atiha to the vastness of it. And we have come to take you from jawril adiyan ila adlil islam, from the shackles and from the injustices of other traditions to the justice of Islam. Subhanallah, what a beautiful summary he gave and explanation he gave as to why they had come into that land not to, you know, for the riches or for other uh, motives or other reasons. But this is the only reason to take you out from the shackles of people to the worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created you. This was their main purpose. So this was the statement, statement of Amir ibn Rabi radiallahu anhu. It shows us that Islam is so vast. Islam, you know, sometimes we have these perceptions. Sometimes we have these thinkings that we shackle ourselves in that we are unable to get out of. These superstitions that may ha we have sometimes or these cultures that we have sometimes, we're so stuck in it that we're unable to get out from it. And it makes just life very difficult for us. Makes life, you know, very miserable for us at times. As I spoke last week, that sometimes we are in this perception, these thinkings about certain people. You know, uh, I heard this from another scholar, and it was so beautiful. He quoted this from a great scholar who passed away a few years back. And he used to reside here in Toronto, uh, Sheikh Abdullah uh, Kapudri, rahimahullah. He mentions that once he was traveling on a train and in India, and somebody, you know, well, there were small children who were, who were just being naughty and not 
uh, obeying, not being, you know, they were messing around. And so the parents said, look, chup chup betho, we sit quietly. Otherwise, that Maulana Sab is there. You know, Maulana Sab with a big beard. And so Maulana Sheikh, who was there at that time, he came to the child, gave him some candy, gave him some sweets, and spoke to him nicely. And then he addressed the parents in saying that, look, if you instill the fear of this sheikh, per person with a beard and with a hat, in the heart of this person, this child from now, when the child grows up, that child will not want to learn more about Islam. So from a small age, sometimes we instill that fear. And I sometimes even parents come to me, you know, just be a little bit strict with him, show him because he's scared. No, be you know, if you're kind to that child, if you're uh, if you open up to that child in this way and say that these are people who you go to, you sit with, you learn from, then those children will come to the madrasa, they will come to the masjid, they will sit with the imams, they will learn about Islam. So Sometimes we have these perceptions, these, these images, these shackles that we close ourselves into. And some of these are considered as superstitious things. In one hadith of the Prophet wasallam, which I want to speak to you about today, the Prophet wasallam says there's no such thing in Islam as la adwa, wa la tiyara, wa la hamma, wa la safar. The Prophet wasallam said there's no such thing as adwa. Adwa basically means that there's no such thing as contagious disease. Yes, you know, medically speaking, a person may, the doctor may disagree with you and say, look, there's a pandemic that, you know, it, it, if you don't, you know, it, it's contagious. Yes, it's contagious, but doesn't mean that this disease itself has the right to pick and choose. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives the disease and take, gives the cure for it as well. Sometimes a person in a room, there's 10 people, 9 may get it and 1 may not get it. Or 5 may get it and 5 may not get it. So it is not the disease itself has the right to choose who I'm going to, who I'm not going to. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that means doesn't mean that we don't take precautions. We take precautions. You know, the Prophet said, if there is a pandemic, don't go into it. And if you're in it, don't go out of it. If there's a plague, he was talking about a plague. So the Prophet said, take your precautions. In our days, when this COVID-19, we take our vaccines. You know, we, we, we wear our masks. We use hand sanitizers. So we take these precautions. But the Prophet's meaning here is that this disease itself does not have the ability to go from one to the other but it is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then goes on to say wala tiyara there's no such thing as superstition bad luck in our understanding today friday the 13th you know i think it was last month or something we had friday the 13th if there's a ladder don't go underneath the ladder if there's a black cat that crosses by you, then these kind of concepts that we have today in our society, if you go into a building, there's no 13th floor. You go somewhere, you know, uh, there's sometimes there's no houses with a 13th number on it. There's, you know, if you, there's a black cat that passes by, people get so scared. That means that, you know what, we're going to die. Something awful is going to happen to us. So these kind of concepts, it keeps fear in us. It shackles us. It keeps us behind. Yes, we, uh, we, you know, uh, we embrace other cultures. But when other cultures have these superstitions in them, then we stay away from them. We teach our children, this is not right. We should not adhere to these superstitions. You know, in our culture, in our society here, in our communities, there are many people, they have their certain mindset certain superstitions that you know what uh number four is death to them number four is death to them sometimes they will not buy and purchase a certain house in a certain position because they feel like the energy will go from that house but for muslims alhamdulillah there's barakat coming in there there's blessings coming in there 
So supers the Prophet says, Wala tiyara, wala hama. Uh, you know, the owl there was in the jahiliyyah, they had if they would see an owl on top of their house, they would say, This is bad luck. So the Prophet said, There's no hama, there's no wala hama. This concept of superstition about the owl, it does not exist in Islam. And the other fourth one that he mentions here is wala safar, the month of safar. So our scholars say safar comes the word from the word derived from the same you know letters as sifar, which means zero. So they believe that you know if, there should be no happiness in this month because in this month of safar, if you are to get married, there's no blessings in it, zero blessings in it. But rather, this concept is wrong. This superstition is wrong. We are in the month of safar, and scholars have added another name to safar, al muzaffar. Safarul Muzaffar. Muzaffar means the successful month. In other words, do get married in this month. Do have your good uh, you know, occasions and happy occasions in this month. Have your joyous occasions in this month. If you have to give a aqika, have an aqika in this month. If you want to do a walima, do a walima in this month. Don't think of it that it's going to be bad luck for us. Don't ever think like that. Wala hamma, wala safar. This is the, you know, what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasizes in Islam that there's no such thing as these uh, superstitious things. And in the time of Jahiliyyah, they used to believe in that. They used to believe that this month had no blessings in it. In one hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions that, you know, once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam addressed the Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'in after Salatul Fajr. And he said, Uridat Ali al Umam. That many nations were presented to me with their prophets in a dream. The Prophet ﷺ used to come for Salatul Fajr. And after Fajr, he used to turn around. And after the Tasbihat and Adhkar, he used to address these dreams. If somebody had a dream, he would interpret the dream for them. Or the Prophet ﷺ would relate his own dream to them. And so he said, last night, that al umam. Many nations were shown to me. And some of the prophets only had rohayt, a small group of people. One had nafar or nafaran, like one or two people with them. You know, sometimes we think to ourselves that this person is no good. Look, he does not have an impact on as much people as this other person. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't say the prophets were bad, aliyah billah. The prophets were prophets. They came with the same message. But some of them had very few followers. Nuh alayhi salatu was from the Ulul Azm. But he had only a few followers. He propagated Islam for 950 months, uh, 50 years. You know, but when it came to the followers, very few. So the Prophet said, I see in different nations and they had very few of them until I was, you know, I came to a very big nation, a very big group of people. And then I thought this was my nation. This was my ummah. And it was told to me, no, this is not your ummah, but this is the qawm or ummah of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. I was taken further ahead and then I was told, undur ilal ufuq, look in the horizon, look onto your right. And I looked and there was a huge group, just as large as the, the nation of Musa alayhi salam. Then I was told, look on your other side. And there was another huge nation on the other side as well. Then I was told that this is your ummah from the angels. And then I was told that from there, 70,000 of them will be entering into Jannah without any hisab and without any adab, without any reckoning and without any punishment. Imagine, no punishment and no reckoning, no asking questions. Because one of the most difficult times of the hereafter is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take account of our lives. That what did you do with your life? What did you do with your youth? What did you do with your time? What did you do with your wealth? What did you do with the ilm and the knowledge that you had? These are some of the questions that we will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there will be 70,000 of them that will be very fortunate that without that hisab and without the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, directly they will be said, go into Jannah. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left. The Sahaba started discussing. Ya, you know, what did the Prophet say? So who was he referring to? 70,000. Who are those fortunate 70,000? Who are those lucky people? So some of them said that maybe it's those who are born on Islam. 
maybe la alla some said no maybe it's those people who were sahibu they were the the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the companions of the prophets and then when this discussion was going on that it could be these people it could be these people the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came out and seeing that they were parishan they were a little bit upset they were discussing that who could it be who were the fortunate people the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked that what are you discussing and they said, Ya Rasulullah, when you told us that there were 70,000, we're thinking, who are those 70,000? Who are those 70,000? And we were coming with our own un understanding and our in in interpretation. So the Prophet wasallam said, no, these are the people who wala yarqoon, wala yastarqoon, wala yatatayyaroon, wa ala rabbihim yatawakkaloon. That these are the people who don't do ruqya. In other words, there are impermissible ruqya. Impermissible meaning, you know, some people, they do certain things which are contrary to the Quran and Sunnah. We know that the Quran is shifa. Alhamdulillah, if we do Quran, uh, ruqya with the, uh, and shifa with the Quran, Alhamdulillah, is permissible. But saying words which are shirk, which are associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is impermissible. The people who don't believe in any Ill, uh, evil omens, bad luck. Those people who don't do, you know, uh, who believe in superstition. And who have their full faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ They will be the ones who will enter, will be from amongst those 70,000 who will enter into Jannah. From amongst the Sahaba, there was a Sahabi by the name of Urkasha radiallahu anhu. Urkasha radiallahu said, Ya Rasulullah, make dua, I'm one of them. The Prophet said, you're one of them. Subhanallah, on the spot, he asked and the Prophet said, make dua for him, he got accepted. Another person stood up, Ya Rasulullah, make dua for me. He goes, too bad, <laughs> your time is gone. Urkasha beat you to it. So... We should also try in being from amongst those 70,000, those who have full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't believe in superstition, don't believe in bad omens. As I mentioned, we are in the month of Safar. People take, you know, bad omen from there, bad superstition from there. They have that misunderstanding about this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions that man ata arrafan. Sometimes the people go to the arraf, they go to the astrologers. People who look at the stars or who look at your palm or they look at the crystal ball and they tell you about the future. They are kahin, fortune tellers, astrologers. Once I read, not to, just uh, the, today somewhere, that in one country they go to their elder, you know, I don't want to name uh, them by, you know, uh, that definition, but they go to their elders. And they ask that, what is, look at my palm and tell me what's going to be happening to me in the future. And this woman was told that she's going to be a widow. She was so upset, she was so distraught that she killed herself. She killed herself. We find the Prophet ﷺ said, Man ata arrafan fasa'alahu an shay'in. And they asked him about something about the future. Then Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَمْ تُقْبَلْ لَهُ صَلَاةُ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَ For 40 nights, the person's salah is not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your salah, your, your prayers are not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this does not mean that you intentionally go to an araf, you intentionally go to an astrologer and say, I don't pray for 40 days. No. This is not the meaning of it. It means that you still have to pray. But the virtue, the reward that you get for your salah, you will not get it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For 40 nights or 40 days. Imagine what a grave sin that is. What an evil, what a grave sin, what a major sin that is. It's considered from the kabair. And many people, they follow into it. They look at and read their horoscopes every day. Before it used to be in the papers, I don't know where it is now. But people look that today, okay, I belong to this month and this month. So today, somebody just comes up with it every day. Today, you're going to face bad luck. Today, you're going to face good luck. And they get up in the morning and they, they you know, schedule their whole day around that reading. These people are thinking up things every day. They don't know what's going to happen to them in their own lives. 
So sometimes, you know, these superstitions, they hold people back. They hold them in shackles. These bad omens. The Prophet says, La adwa wa la tiyara wa la hama wa la safar. But the Prophet did say, Yu'jibuni al fa'l. But good omen, good luck, is something that I like. So somebody asked, Ya Rasulullah, what does it mean, fal? Nake fali. One is what I mentioned, bad omens, bad fali. In Urdu we say it because a lot of people speak Urdu. Nake fali and bad fali. So the Prophet said, it's a good word or a good sentence that makes you feel good. Or a good sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know that this is from Allah. Good luck charm doesn't mean that person says, I have this ring. It's going to bring me good luck. As soon as I take it off, I'm going to be, something bad is going to happen to me. A good luck charm. And sometimes this is so much promoted in movies and uh, uh, TV shows that people start actually, uh, uh, I've seen a lot of people, they start wearing it now and tying it now. And say, this is, brings me good luck. If it's not on me, it brings bad luck. A rabbit's foot, a horseshoe. They put the horseshoe up in their in their houses. Say this brings me good luck. There is no concept of that in Islam. The good luck comes from Allah, a sign from Allah. That you know what? This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A good sign comes, and the example of that is that at the time when the Treaty of Hudaybiyah was taking place. And there was negotiations going back and forth for the Prophet ﷺ, for the Muslims and the non-Muslims. The delegations that used to come, there was back and forth and there were pretty difficult negotiations that were going on. And in the last group that came from the delegation of the Kuffar, one person came by the name of Suhail ibn Amir anhu. Suhail ibn Amr anhu. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as soon as he seen him coming, he at that time Suhail was not a, a, a Muslim, so he said, "Suhail is here. Suhail is here." And Suhail comes from the word and the root word sahala, which means easy. In other words, Allah has sent Suhail to us, and through that, Allah will make it easy for us. Your affairs of this negotiation will become easy for you, and that's exactly what happened. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we give some sadaqah on our behalf to Allah subhanahu for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we say, Allah, give us a good sign. Allah, we rely on you. And alhamdulillah, some good sign comes. Then we take that as a good sign. Like I just said, Suhail comes. So, you know, easy, it made it easy for the people. You know, there's one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in which he mentions that every uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala says a hadith Qudsi, in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that Allah subhanahu wa taala says, when it rains in the morning, there are my servants who wake up in the morning who are mu'min with me and some who are, reject me, some who have belief in me mu'minun bi wa kafirun bi. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that those people who say it rained because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ki rahmat, Allah brought down this rahmat, Allah brought down this rain, then they have iman in me. And if the, the certain uh, other types of people who say, no, the rain came down because of this star, they used to attribute the rain to the, you know, the different positions of the stars. So if this is because of that star or that star or that star, then they have brought and they rejected me and they are not believing in me. So we attribute everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we take make fali, we take good omens. As for and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for bad omens and superstitions like this month of Safar, and even I mentioned last month as well in the month of Muharram, that you know, people take it as you know what happened with uh, Hussein of the Allah. People said, No, we shouldn't have any good or joyous occasions at that time, etc. So these sometimes we you know these shackles uh, we are in, we need to free ourselves from there. The Prophet said, if there was any nahrusat. Shu'mun means if there was any difficulty, hardship, if there was any. The Prophet says there is something. He said if there was in anything, it would be in three things. He said it would be in your horse, it would be in your house, and it would be in your family. Why? He said if there were. 
Because always we have challenges in the cars. Nowadays we have cars. In those days it was in the horses. So the horse would be you know, good and it's a necessity. But sometimes if it would fall sick or it would die, then there was challenges. What would we ride on? Same with our car. If it, you know, it needs towing or it got into an accident, it, it, stress, it brings us stress. So similarly with your house, you know, people always writing, anybody have a plumber? Anybody have a, you know, my, my roof is gone, my this is gone, my faucets are leaking, you know. So we have chat. And number three is the family. Husband for the wife and the wife for the husband or sometimes it's with the children. So these are chant. The Prophet said, if there was any nahusan, if there was anything, it would be in these three things. But even in that, the Prophet said, no, this is from Allah. This is a challenge that we have to face in our lives. So it's not something that we say, oh, this is because of this or because of that or because of Friday the 13th or because of the month of Safar. As I said, this is a blessed month. And Safarul Muzaffar is a successful month. This na 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 name Muzaffar has been added to this month as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the understanding and the tawfiq to act upon what has been heard and said. Uh, many brothers and sisters have requested to make dua for their loved ones, those who have passed away, especially uh, brother Dr. Zehan Rashid, who is from the Happy Strong Families. He does many programs in many different places around GTA, and especially also in uh, Darul Iman. So his son-in-law was young, uh, passed away today in the U.S. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him maghfirah, grant him jannatul firdaus, and grant sabrun jameel and patience to all the family members and many others who are sick. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them complete shifa. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the hardships and difficulties that the ummah is facing today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the Muslims throughout the world. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, you know, remove our hardships and difficulties from this ummah. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Please donate generously. Uh, to the masjid and also tonight we do have tafsir beginning inshallah you can come here with your families inshallah and we will begin from surah nisa so it will be at eight o'clock tonight after salatul maghrib so we request everybody to please come in person if you can if not join us online inshallah and from surah nisa onwards now will be consistent every day and going in uh, one formation inshallah in the tafsir every week inshallah also uh, we have started our evening madrasa we have evening hives as well. We have Sheikh Ibrahim Bimat here now, mashallah, who started the evening hives program. We have the Sunday program coming up for the boys and girls, young boys and girls as well as for the teens as well. I will be taking for the teen boys. If you have children who are, you know, who have graduated from Madrasa now, who are in high school from the ages of 12 to 18, and, you know, they're facing challenges or they're facing doubts or they're having, giving a little bit of, you know, a hard time in understanding and practicing Islam, then please send your children here, inshallah, on Sunday between 12 and 2 p.m. And also for the teen girls as well, for 12 to 18, inshallah, that we have a qualified teacher for that as well, inshallah. So these are different programs that we are introducing here in our Muslim. Allah, uh, keep them in mind and please spread the word to others as well. Jazakumullah khair. The adhan will be called and thereafter time for Salatul Sunnah. Uh, <laughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashadu anna Muhammadin Rasulullah Ashadu anna Muhammadin Rasulullah Hayya lassalam Hayya lassalam Hayya lal-fala Hayya lal-fala Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar 
ইলা হইল